I just got done doing Roland Martin Unfiltered, which I do every Thursday from 6 to 8. The show is supposed to be about about eight different topics. Unfortunately, it was only about Joe Madison, who passed away today on February 1st, the first day of Black History, uh, 2024. And uh, I got to tell you, you want to talk about one of the most untimely deaths you could ever have. So we, we're in this period of journalism right now where uh, we're dealing with people who are not serious, who have entered the journalistic plane. Uh, because, of course, today's journalism has no rules for entry. Anybody can. And, of course, the First Amendment does dictate that. But Joe Madison was the exact type of journalist that we need around, the exact type of person who is dealing like with a ton of important issues in the Black community, always trying to bring up things that were serious, uh, and not doing the type of journalism that I think is so much of what we see now is uh, the type of journalism that's just done for clickbait. Uh, a lot of celebrity, a lot of spectacle, a lot of nonsense. And really it's done because we understand that the thing that makes money in journalism now is traffic. And traffic being the goal, that means that you're going to get a lot of topics that aren't very important, but drive traffic. Joe Madison started his career over 40 years ago at a time when, of course, sales were the thing that made you a profit in journalism, whether it was a sale of a newspaper, an ad sale against what you were talking about. Uh, now everything is clickbait and sort of predicated on the idea that if you get a lot of traffic, get a lot of views, then you must be important. Well, Joe Madison was important for another reason, which was the fact that he would bring up things that a lot of people would otherwise ignore. We talked about a few of those things on Roland Martin tonight, one of which was the Sudanese crisis that nobody was paying any attention to. And Joe Madison took that topic and really put it on the forefront uh, of his show, of his radio show, and kind of made people pay attention to something that nobody was paying any attention to. That happens often in journalism today, because what gets priority is what caters to certain demographics that advertisers want to cater to uh, and um, that corporate interest wants to cater to. And, and Madison had absolutely nothing to do with that. The other thing that sort of comes to mind in this election year, which is consequential, as Greg Carr said tonight, an election and a year for all the marbles, uh, to say the least, is that somebody like Joe Madison is the exact type of person that you kind of need uh, that narrative voice that sort of th says the things that everybody is afraid to say uh, and guides everybody in a direction that they may not want to go in, but they need to go in. A and so, you know, with journalism in a period right now where you're seeing all these layoffs, uh, the Los Angeles Times being the latest one. And of course, we had the buyout round at the Washington Post right before that. Yesterday, the messenger closed up shop after raising $50 million. Uh, so they're gone. Uh, it's a situation where we see a change in journalism that I think is certainly not for the better. Uh, places like Time and Newsweek are a shell of what they were 20 years ago. Uh, and you see that journalism is basically turning into, I actually think morphing into what we see uh, on social media platforms, which is just sort of people talking, no investigation, not a whole lot of hard information, uh, and sort of hot air being prioritized above facts, above the shoe leather journalism that you saw uh, in that sort of um, uh, era right after Watergate. Uh, you don't see much of that anymore. And you see also, too, uh, not an effort to do any of that anymore because what's bringing the traffic in is just a salacious headline. It's just sort of the thing of getting as much attention as you can. And so the fact that Joe Madison died, uh, it was actually last night on the 31st of January, uh, in this moment is a particularly hard hit because this is somebody who was a throwback, a traditional journalist in an era uh, when you had people really, you know, saying the things that need to be said to inform the community, right? So the, the idea of that sort of activism being informing the community and also to reminding the community, you know, Madison used to say on the radio all the time, the words, what are you going to do about it? And that what are you going to do about it is a huge question. 
in an era where a lot of people are, are making, you know, good money and getting a lot of attention off of just talk, really actually doing nothing and just talking. And, and Madison was, uh, was a journalist that started out in the activism, uh, activist community in Detroit as a very young president of the NAACP in his uh, 20s, 24, and then went on to radio and uh, made a huge imprint on uh, a huge influencer uh, in radio, the, the sort of the must listen show, the guy that would say the thing that what everybody would listen to and be buzzing about the next day is pretty incredible. And uh, for him to pass away this year is, uh, is a hard hit, a really hard hit. Um, we have enough entertainment <laughs> in our, in our journalism. I think we're pretty much over indexed. Um, what we don't have a serious discussion about serious topics. And I think sometimes you can have both. I mean, I'm certainly focused on the John Majors case and in, in part, because again, it's not just about John Majors. It's about how black men are treated in the criminal justice system in the United States, historically and present day. The John Majors case is a really ex good example of um, how you can blend both. You could be talking about an entertainer, and you could also be talking about a really serious topic at the same time. But at any rate, uh, Joe Madison was somebody who often was talking about serious topics. Uh, he had that kind of freedom to talk about anything he wanted on serious. and never got the feeling listening to him that there was anybody leaning on him one way or the other. Uh, you didn't have that corporate feel that he was avoiding certain topics because it would be unpopular to some corporate master. You never got that feeling listening to Joe Madison. And uh, so, so this news is uh, a huge blow on a lot of levels. And it comes at a time, again, when uh, journalism, I think, is really struggling to find its way uh, in, a, in a world of distraction uh, and in a world where frivolous content uh, is is a major distraction uh, and also a money maker and will remain a distraction as long as it is a money maker. And while everybody's paying attention to those distractions, there's some real huge issues going on that often get ignored. And Madison was really good at sticking to the things that really mattered, sticking to the things that the community really needed to hear the black community and beyond. And so I wanted to talk about him for a few minutes and uh, we'll see what happens uh, in the coming days. Um, his funeral is going to be absolutely epic. There's going to be uh, an unbelievable cross section of people who are going to be involved in that because uh, he goes through many eras in a lot of different communities in the black community, the activism, politi political community, and the radio uh, journalistic community. So there it is, uh, much more to come. Good luck.